Hey, what's up? It's James. And teacher. We just want to tell you a few ways that you can support us. Financially. That's right. You can go to our Patreon, patreon.com slash PTTP show. Inside the Patreon, you can find a few different packages. You got everything from like a dollar all the way up to $5,000. You know, like if you're business, you want to do some advertising, you want to be a guest on the show or something like that. But you know what? We appreciate any way you guys would like to support us. This is just another way of doing it. Or access the shop at lastreart.gallery. Check out the shop as I'm a teacher's original artwork, some stickers, and also other merch coming at you from some of the guests on our show. Thank you very much. Peace. Peace. You're listening to Paint the Town Podcast with your hosts. LA Street Art Gallery resident artist, teacher, and founder of LA Street Art Gallery, James Chen of podcast episode 150 what's going on bro i'm just chilling man <clears throat> actually just had uh i remember uh dan one will rise yeah, that was um, dan, yeah. yeah he actually had him over uh yesterday uh showing him how to make uh a, a form for um making a mold for uh doing casting he has oh. like he wanted to do a, a palm tree and uh you know um Came on over to the studio and, you know, just basically showed him how it was done and uh, called me up uh, today to uh, make sure we had the, the measurements of the mold making compounds correct and everything. And, um, nice. Now, you know what? I think I saw I'm something I'm curious on that. to see how it works out. What's that? I think, I think I saw something on the Instagram. I just There it is. Actually. Yeah. Like, uh, you know, I know I want to dance uh, uh, kind of like uh, symbols is the raisin in L.A., the palm tree, man. So uh, I'm excited mm-hmm. to see how this turns out, man. Dude, I love when you teach people how to do shit, man. That's why I I love about you, bro. Well, dude, I love seeing people actually do things with it. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. I just show this guy and, and I was like, look, dude, as soon as you get this done, you know, then uh, come back, we'll go further. And I've done that with, you know, some other people and <laughs> just haven't, you know, gotten the next step done. And, you know, I'm, I'm done with my effort if you're not going to, you know, make your effort. And Dan has just been on top of it, you know, and uh, it's, uh, it's a pleasure to work with him. So, yeah. Um, Definitely looking forward to see what he's going to do with that. Um, dude, I, I just got to say, you know, um, the, uh, I just see yesterday this lady, you know, the CDC talking about how concerned she is with the, the new numbers coming out with COVID, mm. you know, with, with uh, hospitalizations and deaths and everything. You I know, know that. To an another, another, yeah, <laughs> another surge. I'm sure, you, you know, maybe some of you know what I'm talking about with the, uh, that report. Um, you know, and, and there's some people that think that once we reach, reach herd immunity, that it's going to be all good. You know, and that isn't necessarily the case. Um, and, you know, it's just, uh, it I seems know, like man. there's I mean, just more and more different information coming out um, every day with this. You know, um, I've got my, my first vaccine shot, I'm supposed to get the next one, um, April 16th. Um, and, uh, you know, I'm still going to wear a mask and, um, you know, you know, here, check out my shirt, you know, I mean, it's like, <laughs> this is what we just need to do for a while longer, you know what I mean? Uh, we got Mo, uh, Mo Howard here. Uh, yeah. The I three mean, Stooges spread out knuckleheads, you know, <laughs> I mean. Speaking of t-shirts, man, I actually, I got to give a shout out to TV Head because he gave me a really cool t-shirt in the mail, man. Uh, nice, yes. TV Head symbol says, don't forget you are replaceable, TV Head ATX. And uh, you know what? It's funny, man. Like, I was totally planning to kick it with him. I think I mentioned this. This dude gave me the wrong phone number, man. I was like, what the hell, dude? <laughs> I was texting him. I well, was like, maybe Yo. he's disle- partially dyslexic like I am. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know. I, but, dude, every, uh, time I, every time I get, you know, do the numbers for the, for the Zoom meeting for these Zoom things, I have to sit there and go, like, call it out audibly as I'm looking at it you know, two or three numbers at a time, go back and forth and do it. And then still, like, I have to look at it again before I, you know, and, and compare it before I push because, you know, sometimes those numbers just fling around on me. It's, uh, that's why I haven't been partially dyslexic, not fully dyslexic because it shit creeps up on you every now and then, you know? Yeah, yeah, man. I mean, I can't imagine like, uh, you know, go, having to deal with that with, you know, you know, going, growing up, man. Right. I think like, uh, you know, I'm very fortunate to just have like a, 
you know, I don't really have any like a uh, learning disability or anything like that. You know what I mean? But I can't imagine like growing up as a kid. I just wish I would have known earlier in life. Yeah. You know what That's I mean? Because like, I thought I was stupid. Yeah, exactly. Uh, That's what I was going to say. Like, you, you just think <laughs> you're like. being being stupid and being fucked up. You know what I mean? If you're fucked up, you do the best <laughs> you can with what you've got. And, you know, that's it'd been a lot easier to accept and, and knowing that instead of me putting in all that time and trying to, you know, do well, reading comprehension, you know, it, it was like, great, okay, you're going to make me read this first and then you're going to ask me some questions about it afterwards, right? And you're going to talk about the chronological sequence and everything. Yeah, that's me just trying to skip that whole paragraph and look at the first question because as soon as I read that paragraph and read the first question, I'm going to go right back to that whole paragraph and have to look for the damn, you know, Look for the answer anyway. You know, you know, for me, like school was always like, it was okay. You know what I mean? But I had to move around a lot during high school. And that personally, that affected me a lot. I went to like three different high schools, actually, you know? Ooh. And uh, yeah, so it's just like, fortunately, I got to graduate my senior year with my middle school friends, man. And, uh, but like I said, man, just like growing up, it's so tough these days. And I can't imagine these kids going through the, the educational through Zoom. You, you know what I mean? Like, I, it must be tough for like how are you kids how are your kids doing man they're doing better now especially my son now that he's getting to play um baseball um you know he's uh finally now they're having uh, baseball practices and they're gonna have a scrimmage game on saturday oh nice um, finally and um you know it's just for him because dude all he sees is his sister his mom me and our friend dale and that's it you know and um you know as a 10 year old kid dude i was we had just moved out to uh you know to another area when i was 10 and and i was able to go out on my bicycle and go riding around and you know this was a time where the parents were like you know go out and play you, you know, know i had i had that too it's like kind of like just come back you know free the neighborhood i don't know if like kids these days it's okay. Like parents would allow them to just ride bikes around the neighborhood anymore, man. It's really a different time. You know I mean? It's, it's like, it's a, uh, like I said, it's just um, a little bizarre, man. Oh, oh, shit, I oh wait, it. hold on a second. Hold on a second. Hold okay. on a second. I'm going to try something here. Yeah. Is this coming up on the thing? No, it's not. Okay. Might not work. I'm trying to uh, call my dad. <laughs> Nice, man. That'd be I awesome. doubt he's going to answer. I looked at him on the... There he is! Dad! Big teach. Hey. Why don't you just get right and go to bed? That's okay. Turn the light on so I can see you. Got my dad here. Hi, Mr. Beal. <laughs> Hold on a second. Let's see. Get him. He's in the dark again. This is a classic Where are you, Dad? I'm going to walk to the family room. Oh wow! You, I, I just saw you in the chair. I thought you were gonna uh, still be out in the living room. There you go. Okay. Turn the angle, turn the camera a little bit to the side so you're not uh, looking sideways at me. There you go. Hey, I want you. Uh, I want you to meet my friend um, James. Okay. Turn the phone to the side a little bit more, Dad. <laughs> it's still boy that's good that's good right there like that all Hi, right Mr. Beale. So, how you doing <laughs> can you see james right there right there is good dude. right there dad right there oh, hi yes. mr real hey, nice to meet you finally <laughs> <laughs> you guys yeah. look quite alike actually yeah a little bit well i want to say let me lean back like he is there for a second get the chin going <laughs> there we go <laughs> we finally We're, uh, get big teacher on the show i love that <laughs> Yeah, let's see. There you go. Get a better look at the old pops. So we're doing a podcast right now, Dad. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Um, okay. And uh, I just figured this was probably the first time that uh, you might actually still be awake, but uh, but you weren't. Yeah, we, don't, um, we normally do it a little bit later, record a little bit later, but uh, yeah, today is a special case. <laughs> awesome. This is awesome. But what the, hey, Dad, was, uh, was Laura there today? What'd you guys do? <laughs> uh, we just, uh, we uh, went over to Nemo's and got uh, a, a pizza and came back here. Oh, nice. Yeah. Did you guys play any pool today? Oh, yeah. Yeah. 
you guys pretty much play pool every time she comes over, huh? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> she, she, she's very good at it. She, she can beat me every time. Well, she wasn't that good when she first started visiting you, though. I mean, it seems like she's getting better and better, huh? Yeah, yeah. I bet she's going to be, like, going down to the local pool hall making doing some hustling before long. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Oh, yeah. Well, that's good. Good. Hey, that uh, place that I told you I burned in Dustin? Yes. It was uh, at Alvin's. Oh, wow. Yeah. So they had a big fire there, huh? With, yeah. They just needed to collect some insurance money, huh? I guess so. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, Dad, you know, um, did you hear that, uh, well, you know they had that big uh, uh, cargo ship in the Suez Canal, right? Yeah, yeah, I saw that. That's amazing. Yeah, you know, they got that thing free now, you know. Yeah. But it took, them a, took them a while, yeah. But, you know, that first picture they had, they only had one bulldozer out there. Did you see that? Yeah. It looked like a little toy. <laughs> All right, well, look, Dad, we just want, I wanted you to meet uh, James. Say hi right quick. Nice um, to meet you, Mr. Beal. I'll let you get back to bed. Uh, I'll talk to you soon, okay, Dad? I love you. Love you, too. Thanks for the call. All right, bye-bye. Bye, Mr. Beal. Bye. <laughs> love that, man. Hell yeah. Is Laura your, uh, your, your dad's new lady friend? <laughs> <laughs> lady friend. Basically, might as well be. Um, no, right. she's, a, uh, she's a caretaker. Uh, she works with uh, Visiting Angels um, uh, there in, uh, in Destin for Walton. And, um, yeah, they're, they're really good service. And Laura, in particular, has been great for my dad. Now, you know, doesn't, uh, doesn't hurt that she's also really pretty. <laughs> <laughs> well, but she's really man. nice. She's really nice. When I was there, um, you know, back in January, uh, I got to meet her and, you know, spend a little time getting to know her and everything. And, um you know, now that mom is gone, uh, my dad is a hermit, dude. That's kind of where I get part of my hermit ability from. I see. Oh, dude, yeah. bring him in. You know what? That first doorbell wasn't for your bobs, actually. It was uh, uh, <laughs> for our guests, man. So I don't want to keep our guests waiting any longer. So, uh... Put on your red shoes and dance the blues. Welcome, Ryan. How you doing? Can you hear us okay? I can hear you. Hell yeah. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you right. so much for joining us today, man. We really, really appreciate you, man. Thanks, for, thanks for having me. I mean, this is, this is great. Good talk some Mark. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Thanks for joining us, man. Cool. Um, I'm sorry. What, uh, what is that up on the wall behind you there, if I may ask? That is a, a piece that I did. God, it goes back some years. It's a, like one of those Trump Loy pieces that I that I've done in the past. Um, I always worked on wood for so long, and so I just used the actual wood and then uh, painted the. Um, yeah, it's just like a random piece. It says uh, yeah. in, inside of it, it has like a a gallery tag. It has my name, um, the title of the piece, which is "Throw This Away." Uh, <laughs> mixed, mixed media on wood and then the t and then the size and then a red dot on it but um nice I, yeah well we're really excited to talk to you today man because first of all you have such a uh i would say like so many different types of uh styles within with you know and they're all super i think surreal to me to, to me when i when i look at it man and i'm a big fan of uh all your works man so uh um you first know, of all where where are you from originally yeah i'm from here in la Nice. Oh, I'm part of LA. I'm from LA too. All your life, son of a bitch. All right. I hate you. <laughs> yeah. I'm from I didn't get to get out here until about 10, 20 years ago, you know, and 10, 20, until about 23 years ago. And, you know, <laughs> been loving it ever since. But what part of, uh, of California? I'm from Westlake Village originally. Oh, nice. Um, okay. So that's where I grew up. Um, and then, um, yeah, I stayed. I went to UCLA, and and so I've I've been been a LA born and bred. Oh, Bruin. Okay. Have you lived anywhere uh, else? I did. I actually, I did a year in um, Chattanooga, Tennessee. My last year of school was in Chattanooga. Oh, beautiful oh, place. Oh, okay. Man. School. Now wait a second. Wait a second. Mm. Um, 
what, how did you end up in Chattanooga for the last part of your schooling? What was, what kind of schooling, what was going on? So I, um, I was playing football at UCLA and. Oh, uh, damn. Yeah. <laughs> so that was, that was my, my, my start. So yeah, I was at UCLA and then I, um, uh, I was playing quarterback and then I won a couple big games uh, my sophomore year and then I got injured my junior year um, and then was only playing or at the end of the I was only playing off and on and I, I, I knew that I wanted to go to the NFL and I, I knew I needed to play so um, I didn't want to take the chance of you know getting you know not getting a starting job so I left to make sure I got some more snaps, more snaps. And so that's how I ended up in Tennessee in Chattanooga ah, okay. playing for the, uh, playing for the mocks. Here's a, what was it like living in Chattanooga yeah. dude? <laughs> just, after living in LA? Right here. Yeah. <laughs> for you. Okay. Chattanooga was amazing because it was, uh, you know, in LA, everybody's doing something or they're, you know, they're, it's very active. It's a very, very active busy. place, you know, and that's all I knew. And then going to Chattanooga, everybody was just living, you know, it was very, just, it was They're just not trying like, to climb any ladder or anything. We're not doing anything here than just enjoying life, yeah. and living, you know? And I'm like, man, this is awesome. Like, I, I loved it. I love the culture. I love the people, you know, the pace of the South was, was really, it was, it was, it was awesome. You know, I've been to Chattanooga actually. Um, it's not far away from the Jack Daniels distillery, basically. Right. Um, it's not far. The, yeah. It's, from, it's in Lynchburg basically. Right. right? And I think right. like Chattanooga, a lot of times people go there for like their bachelor parties or, or, or something like that, right? For people from the South. It's kind of like a small getaway town, right? Is it? It's a, it's a cool little town. It's like one of those, those little mid, mid-size Yeah, um, but towns. I mean, everything's beautiful too. It doesn't look like older ghetto. Well, it's a, you know, it's a college town, so it's a party town. Yeah. Oh, okay, yeah. okay, okay. There's, okay, it's, <laughs> there's the art school there basically. But yeah, no, I had a great time there. Um, Ryan, if you don't know, I'm a DJ too. So, you yeah. know, I tend to favor party t- party towns. I actually went to <laughs> UC Santa Barbara myself, so I'm a fellow UC system. Yeah. Uh, you know, I didn't make it into UCLA, but, uh, you know, we're fellow, like, uh, you know, you, you guys are still in basketball, actually, basically. I know. <laughs> I mean, kicked out already. <laughs> you guys give us a run for our money in partying, that's for sure. Yeah, that's you for guys, sure. You guys got that taken. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, man. So, so, anyways, Teach, uh, do you want to do check your, check your feed real quick? Should we do that? Um, just kind of go straight into sure, it? Man. Yeah, just give people an idea. Um, I I was wondering, um, the the portraits that you do, um, you know, they... Uh, yeah, let me, would... let me play the sound effect real quick. Hold on. Check your feed. Check oh, your, yes. feed. your feed. Check your feed. Check your feed. Check your feed. You can't, stop a, you can't stop a DJ from doing sound effects. Yes. That's right. Yeah. That's right. That's right. So, uh, so yeah. I, would say, I would say they're like, you know, portraits with, uh, you know, a bit of contortion um, going on. And... Um, I mean, I have, I have several questions. First of all, um, the media that you use, I'm guessing, what is that, uh, acrylic maybe with oils or something like that? What kind it's of all medium? oil. It's all oil. All oil. Okay. Yeah. And so just to be fair, to put these into context, um, this, the, the work that you're looking at there is all from last year, uh, all from like 2020. And I, I made a conscious effort to, to become, because uh, like you said, James, I've worked in a lot of different mediums and... I kind of, you know, with the pandemic hitting, I was like, well, what is it that I want to do? What do I want to make? Or what do I want to, you know, we, I'm going to have a couple of years here to kind of figure out and, and, and create a body of work that I can show coming right. out of it. So <laughs> what is it that I want to do? And I, I just, I've always, I've always loved um, painting and, and, and oils especially. And Wait a second. I, when did that start? It started when I finished... Um, you know, I, I was very active in art in high school. And then when I was recruited to UCLA, they, uh, you know, I met with the head of the art department. I was going to be an art major. And then it ended up being all oh, the classes were in the afternoon when practice was. So I couldn't, uh, I couldn't be an art major. So and it, I wouldn't have been able to do both anyway. Um, sure. So then as soon as I finished, um, I signed with the Cincinnati Bengals. Then I was, I was, I got hurt in camp and then I came home at surgery and during that time, I'm left-handed. I had my left arm in a sling, and I draw right-handed. So Whoa, I started, that was the what? first time I started painting, yeah. Whoa, okay. Wait a second, wait a second. That blows my mind a little bit. <laughs> I know, I do some you, things left, some things right. It's really Bro crazy. with your left hand, mm-hmm. but you draw with your right. That's it. Wow, okay. Amazing. Can you throw with your right hand at all? Not, not worth it. Not near no. as good as, okay. <laughs> no. 
wow, oh, that's, that's crazy. Okay, so you yeah. had plenty of time to, to sit and, and draw, basically. Yeah, so that's when I started, you know, painting for the first time. I'd only done charcoal um, and pencil up to that point. And, right. um, and I just loved it. And I, and I never stopped making art since then. You know, I always, I had a studio at that time in my parents' garage and I, and I would, I was living in Santa Monica and I would drive there for the weekends and I would paint all weekend and paint at home. And, and, and it was just, I just never stopped. And then it started, the work started to evolve. You know, it's like I, I was conscious of, you know, what was, what existed in the art world or what existed in art. Um, and I knew I wanted just to kind of do something different. And so that's where I got into the blowtorch work, where I used the blowtorch on the wood and, and started creating work that way um, for a long time. And then I got tired, not tired of it, but I just missed color. So then I brought the painting and that's kind of where this piece behind me started, where I wanted to, to explore paint, painting a little more. And then, you know, fast forward now, here we are 2020. And I, and I was like, I just want to get better at it. I'd never taken a lesson. I'm completely self-taught, you know? And so what? I was like, how, I'm so now. The, uh, teach, this is the uh, mm. torch on wood real quick, just to let you know the details. Well, okay, wait, what size is that? How big is that piece? That's a 60 by. 96. Uh, 96 yeah. by 60, yeah. Okay, so that's that's pretty big. Okay, because my piece, God, yeah. if that's like a nine by 12 and you're doing that with a blowtorch, it must, <laughs> you, you should, could have been a, a like a um, surgeon or something like that. Yeah. But yeah. Uh, wow, these are so, awesome. You can only get so small with the with the torch. Right, right. Um, you know, so oh, it's- dude, these are amazing. Thanks, man. Yeah, yeah, awesome. Okay, so I just wanted to show the audience- People, whoever is listening, you that. gotta just get on over to YouTube and watch this video because, you know, these, these yeah, it's, it's a lot easier for you to, just amazing work with the with the blowtorch. What else? I mean, would you use like a wood burning thing along with the blowtorch? Or no, I, I, when I first I, I did, and then I made a conscious decision to just use the flame. What? And so I was just manipulating the flame to like cutting the flame in half, basically to get oh my um, god, you know, straight like thinner lines. And it's tough. It's oh, like a wow. tattoo. You know, there's no mistakes. You can't. Um, yeah. That's the yeah. thing. That's why I'm just freaking out over this and why I'm trying to tell people you need to, you need to check out this video because, or, and go check out his work because um, knowing that now, dude, mm. holy shit, that's a whole nother level of respect for the flame control, you know, mm -hmm. and, and spray painting and graffiti and everything. It's all about the can control, but yeah. uh, you've got some serious video right here. Um, uh, fire control, man. Yeah. <laughs> so you can see it's how it's, how it's done. And yeah, there's different torches that I use. I've got, you know, that, um, uh, that's a bu uh, butane torch and I've got a map gas torch I use for bigger yeah. um, shading and shadows and stuff. Have you done airbrush before? I have. Yeah. So then how, I got an, I got how an airbrush. Similar is it, how similar is it to airbrush this? Uh, um, uh, it's got like a similar, it. it's got a similar. Yeah. Feel, no, no, sure. no, no, no. Because if you fuck up dude with, with an airbrush, you can, yeah. you can spray back <laughs> over it. You know what I mean? This He's like, it's like you said, it's like a tattoo. You know, if you, yeah. if you fuck up, you can't get off okay. that. Bro, you have a good poker face. Like, oh, no, that's fine. It looks great. And you, you can't tape anything off either because then it just Ooh. burns. <laughs> so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good point. Good point. Damn. Man, so you, these are, yeah, these yeah. are amazing. But go ahead. So from the wood torches, you miss color, man. And then yes, you, I miss color. Then I got, then I started, started painting again. And then that kind of evolved in, into some different pieces and different series. Um, I got really into like text and font and, and, and yes. text words. Um, here, I saw, I saw this one right here. Use your words. Um, can you tell us a little bit about this, this series, man? Yeah. So the, this one was, it was just coming approaching the work just from a, a text beginning really and uh, exploring all different avenues um, within that and you know a lot of it was like found material some of it was you know original paintings some of it was you know painting on existing paintings uh, I did a stained glass piece yeah 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 we saw that. Um, amazing yeah you know that, awesome. that's a uh, a what gallery was this? In. Was that in? That was at Axiom Contemporary in Santa Monica. Oh, nice. Yeah, so that was that show. And then, um, yeah, so then I, I, yeah, that gets us to where kind of like 2020. It, well, well, actually, you said you got um, into painting, and I saw this series that you did. It's like Death to Coons, Death to Banksy, 
And, uh, uh, you know, can you talk a little bit about this? Because this kind of leads up to your street art um, portion of it, basically, right? Sure. Yeah, yeah. So the, the, yeah, the Death to Show, that started with that Death to Banksy piece. Um, it's a big, like, four by eight foot piece. And this idea of, like. You know, <laughs> I remember this, that one. Yeah, yeah. So that was, like, um, yeah, so that was me missing color and getting back. And just really wanting to to say something, I guess you know. I mean, this is an old. This is this goes back some some years, um, but um, and then the idea to have this show of kind of killing off the artists that have you know either inspired me or or that I've kind of followed, um, and it was just funny how like the images would just come kind of very quick and and, and like the death of, like the shepherd fairy you know sculpture yeah yeah uh, Whoa, okay, that, so, that is impressive okay so bring that one up, yeah this please. is this is basically uh, i mean how long, kinda, how long did it take to make that piece it was that was quite a journey you know because that's that goes from like the 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 idea <laughs> of it and then it was like okay how do i how like how is this going to work is it going to be a painting should i do a sculpture and then once i had this idea of like making it as a sculpture and then having it hang outside, I'm like, I have to do that. Like, I have to figure this out. Oh, you know? it was amazing, man. Was it this just kind of like a, so it wasn't like a all Eureka moment I was going to do it. You came up with the idea and you thought you're like, what kind of medium am I going to put this on? And it kind of- From eventually... conception until you actually started working on it, about how long was that? Um, pretty quick. Like, I, I kind of got moving on it pretty quick. You know, I needed, I needed to kind of, um, you know, I had no experience in this kind of in this kind of work, so I, I needed to find somebody that knew what they were doing. So that took some time, um, and then working closely with them to to get it to to a point where it gets uh, where the mold is made. And then once you make the mold, then you can kind of pop out as many as you want. And I made a decision to do five and an artist proof. Um, and you did five of these big pieces. Yeah, I did five. I made five of those. Holy cow! Yeah. And I didn't, I didn't have to make them all at once. It was great. The, the foundry, or I can't know if it's a foundry, but it's a, um, they Good make question. these big, you the know, they make like cause pieces. They make right, uh, right, California right. art products. I think I used I think a foundry um, would be a correct uh, terminology. Yeah. Um, and yeah, so they, they kept the mold and they're like, okay, when you want another one, just let us know and we'll, we'll pop one out for you. And I was like, great. So as I was, was it fiberglass, them, it's fiberglass. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, so they could live outside and or or indoors, and then as I Perfect. was, you know, so I didn't have to store, you know, I didn't have to storage yeah. for 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 these. So, but now they're Big. all done. They they have sold them all. Um, nice. All, yeah, there's one left that I have, but um, I think you should hold uh, on to that, man. I mean, yeah, I think so. <laughs> that's that one. I'm like, it's just in a nice big crate in the garage, and it's like, yeah, you can just hang out there. Yeah, I mean, I mean, it, it must look a little bit scary when you open it up and then you're laying it on the floor. It, I mean, it kind of looks like it kind of looks like a dead body. body yeah. You know what I mean? But I'm telling you, man. You do I mean, an IG live story, people are gonna start reporting you, man. They're like, dude, it's got, it's so, got yeah. a dead body. I got <laughs> a, a collector buddy of mine. Um, he has one and he has it right when you walk into his house. It's the first thing you see. It's like you open the door and there's that. He's yeah. like, it really turns a lot of people off. <laughs> he loves it. He like makes them laugh. Right. You, you know what, man? In this world, basically, uh, Ellie Strayer Gallery's Panther Town podcast. But when we saw that piece, we're just like, man, this guy really understands the history of street art kind of like all these angles and what makes good piece of street art, you know what I mean? <laughs> and so, so now that you told us a little bit about, you had this death two series, man. I mean, like what made you want to like, uh, you know, kill off your, your uh, inspirations, man. I mean, like, uh, you, you know, I mean, I have those feelings too sometimes, man, but I'm, I'm just curious, like, what, what about you? Sometimes I can be yeah. seen as, as honoring them though, you know? Yeah. Yeah. No, yeah, it's curious. Definitely, yeah. yeah. It's like, I want to be where they are, you know? So it's like, what's, what's take them uh, out of the race. Let's take just them take the them out, you know? Let's, <laughs> So, but it's a, it, you know, when, when Shepard saw the piece, he, he understood the series and he really appreciated it. And he ended, I made a print series of them um, and he signed Ooh, nice. one and, and uh, Ooh, for me. Sweet. So that's, that's nice. Yeah. It's nice to have, you know, that he, he got it, you know? Yeah, yes, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Nothing's worse than having some fascist bastard that just like, you know, how dare you do this or whatever. He's like, sure. come on, dude, I'm yeah. trying to honor you. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> good. I'm glad. You know, it makes you know, me I happy. Just, it's just super cool, man, because like I said, it was like it's it's adding to the sticker culture, but it's huge, you know what I mean? It's like just like uh, you know, smothering in, man. And to me, it's, I was just like, man, dude, this is like 
brilliant piece, man. And I kind of saw your next piece, which is, I mean, a little bit more traditional. More wait, like wait, wait. A, where was, where on the street, there was a piece that was out on the street? Yeah, so I, I, um, I sold it to uh, a collector that had an office downtown. Mm. And um, he was opening a restaurant and he wanted it up above. So we hung it outside. Is yeah. that facing the street or is that like in a courtyard or it was it? facing that's the street? Yeah, there it is. Right. Yeah. If you, if you go to downtown uh, arts district, you know, and walk that's brave, around, man. man, that's brave. I mean, it's just it cool there. because it's like, that is the area for the, you know, street art, man. One of the, one of the, like, you know, aside from Melrose, man, there's you can just, almost see a part of a throwy under it there, I think. Right. Uh, let me like see. bubble letter from a no, throwy. Is I, that... I think that's a wire, but you know, right. Yeah, that's see what I'm talking about. Right. Wire right there. Yeah. But are you sure? Yeah. That's a wire. It's, it's there's a headlamp right here <laughs> but i'm sure there's some throwies underneath it actually that's why they had to put it up high enough right you, you know what yeah, I mean? we got it up high but update on that we uh we just moved it just took it down and put it indoors so that's it had smart. a good run it had a good that's run outdoors, but, yeah uh, <laughs> okay yeah that, was the was the, the sun hitting it like uh or was it on the uh, north yeah, side it had, so it, was... it, it had some it had some direct sun and it we just took it down okay. last week and it held up amazing it looks like it looks this, exactly the same well, dude, awesome. it's on fiberglass. That shit's going to be like, you can just keep repainting it or whatever, man. <laughs> yeah, and I had a good coating. It's, yeah, it, it really held up well. I, I think, I think nice. since you have the mold, though, each, each one additional one that you can sell, you can up the price for every single one now, right? You, you know what I mean? Because Do they still have the mold? Can you still make more of them? No, no, they did. They kill the mold. They destroyed oh, it. Oh, okay, 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 okay. Yeah, I once thinking. I made the last one, once I made the sixth one. Um, well, there you go. There's only five of them in the world, man. Shit, yeah. dude. It makes it more valuable. Six. Five and an artist proof, yeah. So I, yes. got, the, I got the one of them left. <laughs> Awesome. So man. when they destroy the the mold for it, um, basically they're just cutting that thing up, right? I think it was a silicone mold, I believe. Really? I think. Oh my god! I think so. I can't remember what they ended up going with. It's been a minute, but yeah. Awesome, man. So tell us a little bit about um, you know I saw this other mural that you painted basically outside too, um, and I, you know I, I want to know what was the inspiration behind this piece. It's like a wooden figure, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so nice. I, hadn't, I hadn't done a lot of work outdoors and I was pretty nervous, you know, going into this because I hadn't, you know, done this kind of scale um, and just kind of went for it. But the, the idea for the piece is if, I don't know if there's a closer shot of it, but there's a, um, there's a, uh, a, a cl like a musical note, what is it called? A cleft? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, I so, see it, yes. Yeah, so uh, right a on buddy, the chest. A buddy of mine that I grew up with, um, Jason Gaviotti, was this uh, uh, was a epic like piano player, and he was in this band called Birds of New York, and he he passed away right before this piece, and he had that tattoo on his fore on his forearm, and it was kind of like an homage mm -hmm. to him, like just like as a little um, a, a nod to him, but also sure. this idea of. I put it over over the heart because this idea of like don't die with your music still inside of you you know he didn't he he really got it out there and played in front of huge crowds and and had a great you know really it out there but this idea of like don't die with your music so if like you really want to do something and you're like oh, i don't know if i should do this and um like don't it's kind of that so it's like yeah. this this don't sad, be the don't be the puppet be the puppet yeah. master don't, don't have any like oh what i could have done this but you, you know i mean i didn't do that at the end of your life or something like that right i love that man people need to That's hear a that great piece dude i gotta say one thing though mm. i gotta give you a hard time about that lift <laughs> yeah <laughs> that lift you, it's like a massive lift oh it's huge you could, yeah it was like <laughs> you could take that thing up like i don't know 100 and, no not 100 what like 60 feet or maybe Oh, it's, a, it's yeah you could do like a massive massive mold. but that's what they they supplied me i was it was through oh um, shit okay so that was supplied yeah this this nice. whole wall this whole wall was done there was four other artists i think uh mir one did one um, oh wow nice nice you kind of see one, a piece of the, yeah. Oh, yeah um there's a few other ones and it was done through hopscotch la it was that um that like interactive opera that you got inside cars and limousines and you drove around the city so it was it was through that and nice. so they're like, I never heard of that. I'll have to check it out. Hopscotch yes. LA, huh? Hopscotch LA, yeah. Okay, we'll have to check it out, man. So Hopscotch <laughs> Opera, the industry original opera go. that took audiences on a dazzling, disorienting ride in the streets of Los Angeles. Okay, we'll check that out, man. Hell yeah. Um, mm -hmm. 
Dude, so, okay, you're talking about your friend that kind of passed away that you uh, did this piece for. Um, he was in a band, right? What kind of music inspires you, Ryan? Man, I listen to everything. I, as of late, I've been like, I can't get enough of Leonard Cohen right now. That's where I'm at. I just, I can't get Leonard enough. Leonard Cohen? Wow, I'll put old that school, on, huh? I'll put that like on Spotify and it'll just play through his entire catalog when I'm in the studio. And, I'm, and I'll go through, I'll do like days. You know, that's what I've been in as of as of late but i listen to everything i mean i only know him because i cut a stencil of him one time a friend of mine you know just absolutely loved him mm. and uh so that's that's how i became knowledgeable of him the dude is just you know velvet voice and uh yeah just yeah just his uh, his songwriting is so unique and and mm. um it's so you know i just yeah i don't know i love that kind of stuff i love tom waits i love you know oh yeah stuff that's a little yeah just a little more what about growing up like when you're in high school what kind of stuff were you listening to god i loved um like metallica i love metallica i loved um a lot, like of punk, a lot of punk music okay nice nice um, nice gutter mouth and no effects and you know we listened to a lot of that um, So you grew up in socal too right i mean yeah socal such how, how much has it changed for you i mean just like you know now 2020 now i mean west like west lake village man i mean i mean west lake village has grown up i mean that's it's it's almost like a scene now you go there's like bars and stuff on the lake that are just these you know even during the pandemic i remember i went out with a with some friends um out on the boat went on his boat and we see like this this like sea of people inside these these bars and it's like wow this is like a this is a scene out here now we're like, when i grew up there you know, I'd go fishing every day. I'd either get up before school or um, in the when the when the sun was out late, I would go after after baseball practice and go out there for a couple hours and, and do some fishing. Um, it was an idyllic, you know, way to grow up for sure. That's awesome, man. I mean, okay, so how, what about the pandemic, man? How has this been for you? I mean, um, it, you know, it's been, I mean, different for everybody, right? So, yeah, I mean, for me, other than not seeing a lot of, you know, my friends and, and, and family as much as I'd like to. It's been <clears throat> nice just to be able to be in the studio and work. And so that, that kind of catches us up back to the, the latest pieces that I've, sh that I've oh, shown. Yeah, 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 yeah. Is, you know, uh, this idea of like, okay, what is it that I want to make? And, and I wanted to, I just wanted to become a better painter and, and learn some different techniques. So I found painters that I, that I gravitated towards that I was like, why is it that I like these works? What is it I like? And and I found the, the Grisaille method, the, the method of, you know, you paint it black and white and then you layer, 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 layer. And the, the way, color. yeah. Yes. And the way the light interacts with the piece, it kind of, you know, it, it has to pass through these layers and it just kind of glows. It has like a, like a, an energy to them. And that's, I mean, I think there's only a, one or two that are posted on my feed that are with that technique. And the ones that are in my studio, I'm like, I'm so excited to share. I've, I've just been working nonstop. And nice. um, I think, you know, the plan is to kind of start being a little more conscious on Instagram. And, and now that I have a kind of a good flow that's happening, um, I want to start, you know, slowly start to share them and, 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 you know, get some awareness around the new work. So fortunately you guys don't have any to see, but as in the coming months, Dude, be, hey, we're going to be having people check it out and uh, yeah, we'll be that it's coming is going to be uh, pretty damn cool. What's what, the, uh, what medium shows? are these going to be in? They're in oil. Okay. And yeah, yeah, once you come on the show, man, we always promote everybody's work that's uh, that's been on the show, man. So whenever you have new stuff, man, we'll be happy to promote it. But oh, I actually, I, I want to learn a little bit more about this Grisaille technique. I mean, like, it's super cool, man, because if you look at it, you're right, it does have... I actually learned this technique back in uh, in art school. Um, Patrick Fiore uh, was uh, my was one of my teachers, and he showed us the, uh, the technique by... Uh, actually, he had his paint first in uh, burnt umber. And... Okay. Um, in acrylic and okay. then uh you know we'd use a projector project up whatever image trace it down and then you know do the acrylic uh underpainting basically mm -hmm. and um then we'd go back with layers of oil and yeah. i just thought it was amazing because um you know i'd used oil before and if you mess up you try to wipe you might destroy a couple of layers whereas with this you know you have an, an acrylic underpainting and you're going over it just makes it a little bit faster because if you know if you mess up with the oil you wipe it and that acrylic under it isn't gonna isn't gonna go anywhere yeah. um, but it is it's a it's a bit time consuming 
but at the same time, you can get um, the effect of a lot more work being done with not as much um, time in it. Yeah, and I'm still in like trial and error right now, and I'm still every piece is like an experiment. Oh, dude, it like, blows my mind. This, that, uh, try this. Any any kind of art classes at all? No. <laughs> See, I went to an art school, dude. Okay, I'm a <laughs> bachelor's degree of fine arts. You know what I mean? So um, <laughs> just. It, I, I try to tell people, um, and this is actually, you're actually a great example for me, that, you know, um, especially in this day and age when it, the traditional art has taken a hit because of all the, the ability to take a picture and scan it in and print it out in a, you know, famous artist style or something like that, mm -hmm. you know. Um, so it's, it's, it's great to be able to, to show people that you don't need to go to art school and, and pay all this money and go through the curriculum like I did. Mm -hmm. um, all the stuff that I know now, other than, you know, some of the, the history and, and some of the techniques, uh, like the one you're talking about, I did learn at art school, but you know, like as far as the graffiti and everything is, you know, I've learned myself or from another artist, you know, just watching another artist mm -hmm. and, and that's it, you know, and, and also in this day and age after the COVID and everything, this is kind of a level playing field with the, with the art galleries, you know, especially with, if you're doing work on the street or, you know, even now just on Instagram or whatever. You right. know, you, you start getting, um, you know, like some bit of consistency or, or you know, quality to your work. Um, you start develop, developing that following. You know, you just skip that whole art school scene. So, yeah. good on you, man. Yeah, so, you know, you can't, the art world will come when it comes, if it ever comes, you know. So, it's, uh, I think it's foolish to not use Instagram and social media as much as you can. And I've been really awful about it and i've made a, an effort or made a conscious decision to be like you know what this is something that i as much as i don't want to do it i have to because yeah. oh absolutely you know, dude. i could I, be waiting forever for the big big galleries to come along and be like oh wow you you do some cool stuff it's like I, just I keep doing to. it man you got to start it and just keep going and, and, yeah. and develop your own thing you know what i mean right. um and you have a few different cool styles I want to kind of bring up to the audience, man. Like, sure. I really think this cool uh, Willie Nelson, is this Willie Nelson portrait? No. Or, or it's, it's, it's titled, he, listened, oh, he only listened to country music. And it's kind of like- Outlaw a, Country. Oh, out, sorry. He only listened to <laughs> Outlaw Country. I'm sorry. <laughs> I so, apologize. But, you know, it's this cool, like, kind of like blurred effect on it, man. Tell, can you tell us a little bit it about- me a little of uh, Gerhard Rector. Yeah, so these are photographs. So these are done- um, uh, With filters. You know, I don't. I've ne I don't tell anybody how I do this. It's the okay. only body of work that I don't. Ah, that I, yeah, that yeah, I don't. No, dude, I don't blame you. You got to keep some secrets, you know. <laughs> yeah, awesome, this is the only man. one. Yeah. But but what it's you see is is what I see in camera, um, and so it's the body of work that I that I did after the um, the uh, font show, mm. the the word show. Um, I started exploring this again. Actually, I did a show of these called um, Random Acts of Fire the first round of them and they were really a very successful show. They sold, sold a bunch of them. And then I only shot them on a, on a, a cropped frame. And so when I revisited it, I, sh I got a large format camera. And so now you can blow them up, you know, I think the largest size uh, is like 60 by 72. I think nice. they're, they're pretty massive. Um, but I haven't uh, shown these in a gallery yet. So I've just kind of, you know, and they're you know amazing, put man. a few here on Instagram and then West Hollywood commissioned me to do a couple walls that I, that I was able to install them on. So Sweet. they got some great traction there. Um, but when COVID, I, I was meeting with some galleries and then COVID hit. Ugh. And so it kind of put, put the kibosh on, on any shows for that body of work. But it's a it's a body of work that I'm really excited about, and um, I just it's kind of they're all sitting, all the files are done, they're ready to go. And they're, um, they're great decorative you know. pieces, man. I mean, you you know, just just for the house, man. I mean, you know, they look absolutely like stunning with this amazing furniture too, man. Well, the good thing about it is, you know, there's uh, you know certain cultures that uh, actually I think James, you told me about this. How the Chinese people don't like having portraits in their in their houses. But this is actually awesome because they're not really portraits. You know what I mean? They're, they're blurred enough to where they, they become abstract. Yeah. And, um, you know, just that makes it, I think, more universally uh, appealing, you know? Yeah, the, the idea was to, uh, was to nice. don't be so specific with the person and just oh, kind of capture nice. their energy. So how do you find a way to 
um, uh, to do like that. that. And, and, you know, I think portraits are, are some of the toughest for reasons like that. I think it's difficult yes. to sell portraits. And so yes, this, are. this is kind of a way of around it. Like how do you still do a portrait, but it not be so specific. It's like, cause once you see what it is, that's, that's what it is. But these, you know, having lived with them, I got a few in here. Um, they just continue to evolve and you, you see different I things. Can definitely, and, definitely see that. Absolutely. Depending on the mood you're in or what time of day you're looking at it or whatever, you can see different things into it, man. Yeah. Different angles and things like nice. that. Yeah, man. That, mm -hmm. dude, I love that explanation, man. Thank you so much for kind of going. And dude, there's some more too. Here's, I just want to share these with the, Sure. Like they're, so, they're so they're blurred but they're so distinct you know what i mean <laughs> that, that's kind of like my my comments on them man it's just such a different style man and did this style lead up to the portraits that we're talking about earlier um i i don't know i want to i want to say it's like very like dolly-esque you, you know what i mean um is is that any inspiration behind the, these portraits i mean uh, uh you, you know like the faces are so like um this is kind of like a progression from the photograph series that these came out yeah i just i've always loved portraiture i've always loved draw, drawing people and painting people and so i'm like how can i do this um you know because i wanted to continue to to, sh to shoot uh more of that series but with COVID, i didn't want people in the studio and, and so i was like oh, okay true. i just need to do something that i can do on my own mm. and so this is me just kind of exploring you know portraiture in different ways so i can kind of you know distort them or, or create different uh awesome, man. Awesome. just i mean these are you know these one these ones you're scrolling through now are all like experiments and and, and finding it so the the last two are the only ones that have the grisaille method and you can see with that last one like it kind of translates uh, the glowing yes it kind of like man they in in person they really pop and come to life and so nice um, are you gonna have a show of these so ones? Good. i mean uh in, in the works or uh you know because i would love to see these in person man i mean you know you, yeah you, i mean i'm excited to show you guys like in the next next couple months there's gonna be a, i did i've done about eight pieces in the last three months and it, you know, like you said teach it takes forever for these things to dry and yeah it uh, does, man. so i've got like multiple going and they're kind how, of how, what, you know, what size format are they how big are they? they're all 24 by 30. smart i kind of just good. stuck that size um, well, it's I'm very impressive for those yeah. of you who are listening also, you know, if you're going to do a, a show, one of the things that's very impressive is if all the pieces are the same height, they don't have necessarily have to be the same width or whatever, but if mm. you have everything the same height and you line that up on a wall, Ooh, man, that looks so nice and professional. Okay. So back to you. Sorry. Yeah. yeah. So I'm just, yeah, just dial it in. I just love that, that ratio. It just yeah. really, really works for me um it's not too big you know what i mean you're not asking for too much of that person's wall you know but at the same time it's not too small i like that right because i've made a mistake i've made the mistake in the past of making some really big work that <laughs> yeah. if it doesn't sell then you're like okay I'm, I'm what am i gonna do with big this big artwork in the studio <laughs> <laughs> Can you tell us, uh, Ryan, obviously, you know, street art, you know, Banksy, Shepard Fairey, you talked about a lot of some of these inspirations, man. I mean, um, you, you know, it, it, like, how does, you know, street art and graffiti inspire your work, man? I mean, like, when did you, were you become aware of it and stuff like that? I became aware of it. I think, um, you know, graffiti was always a thing. Like, I remember I had, like, this tag that I would always draw in, in oh. high school. Oh, And uh, <laughs> it was very... Unexpected. <laughs> vandal as a young kid <laughs> very limited and it never left my paper um but i remember i was aware of it and i knew it existed and and um it was just it was yeah it was interesting and then i think when was Sh it bart simpson right here yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I, just, I just pulled up a little uh, uh graffiti tag that ryan <laughs> drew the studio wall of bart simpson man i love it but no i'm just kidding <laughs> no, I'm just saying, it's a little un unexpected man so graffiti did inspire Wait, what was your what was your yeah. thing that you wrote or mark what was your uh what was your tag? Oh, I can't tell you that. It's terrible. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, we'll let him keep a secret. It was we'll so secret. limited. It was limited. Yeah, it, 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 I, there's a memory of me like having uh, these three letters, and yeah, it was. It's just interesting. Like in in block what letters. What things did you tag? What things did block, you write on? Block letters and and bubbling and and what do you mean? What did I what? What did you write on? Like, oh, uh, it was just like in my school books, you know, like whatever okay. I was, whatever books that I was, I had, I was. No walls or do you spray <laughs> no, paint No, I never, I never, never, 
I never got into that. He was know? too busy Listen playing to football. Now he's like, no, 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 none of that, none of that, none yeah. of that. No, was, it's all no, good. I, I love it because Ryan's like a real he's Renaissance not a cop. man. I'm not a cop. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, no. <laughs> but I've been arrested before for doing it, so it's okay. You're not gonna. <laughs> but, go ahead, Ryan. Just never. I just. I just never. I just never did. I just. Uh, yeah, so then I think I became aware of it with with Shepard's work. I think with with the Obey sticker, and I think that was like that kind of caught my attention. It's like, what is this? What the fuck is this? This is so like uh, obscure. I just love the how obscure it was, and it was so specific, and it was fucking everywhere. It's like anywhere you went, it was like you when you first it. saw it. Did you realize? Did you recognize that that's Andre the Giant, the wrestler? Yeah, I think the you know the posse one definitely. Right. Um, right. And that inspired an idea to do guerrilla marketing. Um, I had an idea, a buddy of mine was starting a clothing line and he's like, hey man, do the artwork for it. And I was like, okay, we're gonna do this. We're gonna, we're gonna we'll bomb, you know, it was down in Orange County, so we'll just put these all up. And it ended up never happening. But I remember that idea was there to like, we paste and to get an image, get a specific image and, and get it out in the world and just get it everywhere. And people will take notice like that. I remember that very specifically. Um, but for my own art, I never, um, I think graffiti and, and kind of filtered into my early work. Um, the idea of it, uh, was in some early pieces. Um, but, um, I never, never went to the street until I started making, doing pieces outside of my, I had a studio on Washington, um, and I would, there was a big brick wall outside and I was, I was putting pieces out there. Nice. Like nice. Tom Loy pieces. I was doing, you know, just different. And it's really rewarding. Like that, that one piece um, that's downtown LA, the orange one, the, the uh, don't let the music die inside of you. That right, one, right. That, like the satisfaction that you get, it's such a high when you make a piece and you're proud of it and you look at it and it's on this wall and everybody sees it. It's so rewarding. And I'm like, God, I was like so fired up after that. I'm like, I want to do a bigger wall. I want, I want to go do a bigger wall. But I was just find myself like just back in the studio and, and get, making pieces that aren't, aren't going to get painted over, I guess. <laughs> you know what? Well, you know, it also comes down to your means, you know, as, as an artist, um, you know, uh, if some people that's just all they want to do you know what i mean they just want to put pieces out they either want yeah. to decorate or whatever um and uh you know i, I encourage people to, to try each different way of using your art you know and, and figure out which way you like the most because you may think that you want to be a commercial artist you know doing <laughs> book illustrations and, and magazine articles like i thought i was going to want to do mm -hmm. and then once you start doing it, it's a pain in the ass you got to be good at bugging people and reminding them that you're around and everything yeah. You know, and so maybe you try another different, uh, you know, way of using your artwork until you figure it out. Um, but yeah, like you're saying, man, there's nothing better than putting something out on the street because there are times where I had, you know, pieces kind of stacking up in my, in, you know, in my studio. And, you know, sometimes there's nothing more depressing than looking around at all this work and being like, God, you know, this is just stacking up and nobody's seeing it. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, what am I going to do with all this? Yeah. But when you're putting something out on the street, and you know and especially now with you know with instagram you're able to post it up and everything and a lot of hey. times people just have more respect for something when you've done it on a wall it's out on the street you know what i mean yeah um, there's, i mean i i've i've had paintings that i've taken that i was either not that happy with or they were political and i would just take them and go screw them into a into a wall or do a fence oh, and awesome. exit i don't post it i just <laughs> I just put it out there and I drive, it's like either on my route where I can drive by and just see it. See if it's still there. And then, yeah. And it's up, it'll be like, one was up for like almost a year. And then one day it was just, it was just gone. One piece was gone like the next day. I was like, all right, well, they must've liked that one. It was probably, my, <laughs> probably one that was a little too good to, to, po to, to put out there. <laughs> but Dude, I'll, man, do you know, I'll do that. I'll do that. I just want to clear some space. I'll just like donate it to the world and get it out there. Yeah, I love that, man. You know what? You're talking about graffiti being some of your early influences. I can totally see in this Slay piece, mm. just like a little bit of graffiti kind of like influence from there, man. So, uh, you know, this is acrylic on and Masonite on wood panel, basically 48 by yeah. 72. But like I said, I'm just saying it's so cool to me that when I looked at your work initially, man, I totally thought you were just like more of a kind of a fine artist. But I, I kind of found out a little bit more about your street art. And then I was like, wow, man, it's so awesome to hear that like 
fine artists are actually inspired by street art and you know you know because it mm. kind of gets separated different worlds sometimes you know i would say he's multi-dimensional definitely you know definitely I, mean? I would totally say that. and he's a football player too man jesus christ that kind of blows my mind <laughs> you know what <laughs> i mean like we're talking about a renaissance man man shit dude <laughs> but hell yeah, yeah man you know, it's been, a, I mean, it's pretty much an hour that we, we've we had started the show, man. You know I mean? So, dude, is, where can uh, people find you, man? Uh, yeah, Ryan McCann Art. Uh, that's that's the handle on, on Instagram. And uh, I'm going to try to be, I'm going to be, I'm not going to say I'm going to say it here at a public platform, but I'm going to be consistent. I'm going to be <laughs> posting every week. And there's going to be a, a plan and a format. And now that I've said it, I have to do it. Hell yeah. Uh, well, I got, a, wait, I got a question for you. Do you have, uh, do you have kids or anything? I don't. No, I'm married. Um, uh, so you're, Ryan, being speaking earlier of art school, my wife went to RISD. So she'll, wow. she'll kind of tell me about, uh, you know, she's like, gosh, she's like, you would have loved it. She's like, you would have, you just go make, you know, you just, and, and just making art of it, especially at that, in that age, at that age, you know. Oh, college. yeah. Okay. Maybe so. Um, yeah. You know, <laughs> but, um, but yeah, so she kind of rubs it in. <laughs> That's awesome, man. No, my point was, my point was, I've got twin 10 year olds. Okay? Oh, wow. Nice. And a wife that's trying to make a movie and everything. And I wish I was better at being more consistent on posting stuff up and everything. Okay. But I got good excuses. Okay. I got twin 10 year olds, <laughs> yeah. which means you should have a little bit more time on your hands than I do. All right. Mm -hmm. And now that you've already mentioned you're going to be posting more and everything, got to do it, man. Oh, yeah. You like me, right? You made the good choice of not having kids, man. So. <laughs> We'll see. We'll see what happens. You know, we'll get, we'll... <laughs> I just yeah, this is one of the arguments we always have in the show. You know, whether to have kids or not. But um, dude, Ryan, thank you so much, man. We love your work, dude. And uh, please keep us updated on all your stuff, man. Um, in the future, so that we can update everyone else, man. Cool, yeah, cool. Man. thank. You. I appreciate that, guys. Uh, yeah. it's, and and now that you know, know the art world, it. um, it's it's a challenge. So any yes, absolutely is any a help challenge. you can get. It's um, uh, it's mm. uh. Yeah, man. And now that we know you're local, man, we could definitely want you to come out to some events if we have anything, man. For and, uh, sure. Once COVID's over, everybody's going to be aching to come out, man. So uh, thank you so much for uh, coming on the show today, man. Is there anything else you want to, uh, you know, tell the audience, man? That's it. Awesome, That's it. Man. Just keep, it's all, Let's all just keep making work. Hell yeah, man. So ryanmccannart.com, yes. man. man. And, and TJ, I'll give you, I want to give you uh, uh, some props because... I'm in West Hollywood and just down the street, I'm always driving by your, and I didn't know who it was. I saw the, t and then once I started following you guys and seeing the, um, listening to the podcast, oh, I'm dude, like, thank you for your support, man. <laughs> Teach is up right there on the corner all the time. The Crescent oh, Heights yeah. and uh, Sunset. Yeah, that's, <laughs> hell yeah. That's, that's one of my boxes that, have, uh, yeah, that I usually put some new pieces on. So yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. So I'm up to date, man. I drive by that all the time. Good work. Thanks, man. Appreciate it. Yeah. Thanks, Ryan, man. This has been guys. awesome fucking kicking it with you, man. Thank you so much, man. And, uh, Likewise. Yeah, to that went office. by fast, man. Yeah, that went by fast, man. <laughs> we'll have to hang out in person. We will. We'll have him on again, especially when, you're, when your new show's coming on, whenever you're yeah, ready yeah, to that, work on. Good idea. Have you on again, man. For sure. Oh, yeah. I love that. All right, All right cool. Okay. Uh, to the audience, love you guys. Take care. Follow us at PTTP Show. Leave us a review on iTunes. And uh, love you guys. Take care. And peace. Peace. Hey, what's up? It's James. And teacher. We just want to tell you a few ways that you can support us. Financially. That's right. You can go to our Patreon, patreon.com slash PTTP show. Inside the Patreon, you can find a few different packages. You got everything from like a dollar all the way up to $5,000. You know, like if you're business, you want to do some advertising, you want to be a guest on the show or something like that. But you know what? We appreciate any way you guys would like to support us. This is just another way of doing it. Or access the shop at lastreart.gallery. Check out the shop as I'm a teacher's original artwork, some stickers, and also other merch coming at you from some of the guests on our show. Thank you very much. Peace. Peace.